All right. Good afternoon. Just getting started here with our Ohio Bureau of Workers' Compensation uh, webinar with the Finlay Hancock County Chamber of Commerce. I'm Doug Jenkins with, with the Chamber and Lori Goodnight joining us here from uh, the Ohio Bureau of Workers' Compensation. How are you today, Lori? I'm good. Glad you're Excited to be well. here. <laughs> and, uh, well, this is uh, kind of your your debut performance here for us in Findlay and in Northwest Ohio as uh, as you have just taken over this area. Yeah, I used to be up in this area, so I'm kind of familiar with it, but I'm excited. I can't wait for everything to settle down where I can come out and meet everybody and show my face in your area. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess until then, we'll have to, uh, we'll, we'll do the webinar version of you anyway. I do see some people uh, filtering in here, but we are going to get started uh, again uh, if you have any questions uh, comments go ahead and put those in the chat box or you can put them in the Q&A box when we get to the end of this presentation uh, I'll get those back to Lori and we'll take it from there so uh, don't hesitate to ask questions but we will wait uh, till the end before we get the answers on those so you'll want to stick around for that and of course uh, Lori will have all of her contact information if you need to get a hold of her as well with that said Lori I want to hand it over to you I'll run your uh, I'll run your slideshow for you and We'll learn all about some of the different topics and different things that the Bureau of Workers' Compensation is dealing with as we see our way through COVID-19 issues. Well, good, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for having me here today. Um, what we're gonna go through, it's not gonna take a long time, but I'm sure we'll have some questions. I presented and sent this information to all the chambers because these are changes that have happened since the COVID-19 has um, impacted us. And I wanted to make sure that um, employers out there actually knew what was going on and knew of the contact. And I do have my contact information at the end. I am replacing Troy who has left us with 30 years of experience. And I've been here about 26 years and I don't plan on going anywhere for a little while. So you're kind of stuck with me. Topics today we're gonna call um, one that's not on the list, we're going to talk about the mass that BWGC just sent out. We're going to talk about premium deferment option that you have, employer dividend option, um, the annual employer letters that you should have received by now, payroll reporting. With the new COVID-19, we do have some new manual classifications that you may be able to take advantage of as well as the fact sheet that's available out there to help you through this um, time frame, and as well as my contact information. So our new initiative is called We've Got You Covered. And what we did to weaken the, weaken the impact of injury due to the COVID-19 pandemic and to assist in creating a safe workplace across our state of Ohio, BWC sent out at least 2 million mask face coverings to Ohio employers. This was under the direction of our governor. We will be sending out these, um, excuse me, <laughs> sending these out to Ohio employers face masks. And if you're an employer that has participated in BWC and you actually report payroll, meaning you have an employee, you will be receiving at least 50 masks, if not more, depending on the employee count that you have. The cost of the masks were a little under a dollar. They are cloth masks. They, you can rewash them up to 20 to 30 times. Um, depending on the industry, now if you're in an industry that's you know really messy and dirty, you may not be able to wash them 20 or 30 times, but the average is you can wash them 20 or 30 times. Uh, we are still working on obtaining some more masks so that we can send those out. These masks were for to supplement your safety program. It's not to replace them, so I wouldn't count on replacing them, but it is to supplement them. Again, you do have to make sure that you report payroll in order to get these masks. And they're coming in batches of 50 each. So we kind of anticipated maybe four to five masks per employee. So you will be getting quite a few masks to start with. And again, we are getting others to supplement the ones we originally had. It's gonna take us four to six weeks to get this information and the mask out. And you will get a little letter from our administrator on that. Um, we do encourage employers ease to wear them. 
to follow social distancing and of course to follow any of the guidelines that are posted on the coronavirus.ohio.gov. Um, if you do have any questions, we do have a link that you can send, hit click on the link on COVID-19 or actually send an email to BWC at COVID-19 at bwc.state.oh.us. You can go ahead and forward it, please. The next piece I wanna talk about is the premium deferment piece. Uh, due to COVID-19, again, BWC announced that if you have any unpaid premiums for the months of March, April, or May for this policy year, you could defer those premium payments until June 1st. Coming June 1st, we will reconsider to see if we are going to extend that any further. BWC will not refund if you've already paid some of your March, April, or May premiums or all of them. We will not refund that. If you wish to defer your premium payments for March, April, or May, you don't have to do anything. Once we realize that you have not made the payments, we'll assume that you wish to defer them. If you do wish to pay your March, April, or May premiums, you're welcome to do that. But know that BWC will not lapse, cancel coverage, um, assess you any premium payments during the coronavirus pandemic period. We stated earlier that June 1st, I have not heard that we're going to extend it at this time. So if we don't extend it past June 1st, you should pay your premium payments at that time. If you have any questions, contact your local ESS, uh, the local office, and they'll help you with that. Okay, Doug. There we go. <laughs> Getting used to me, aren't you? <laughs> with regard to the policy dividend, we did announce a dividend recently, and most of you should have got it by now. Our governor asked BWC's board of directors to release least $1.6 billion to help ease the economic impact that COVID-19 has had on you and the economy. The dividend was approximately 100% of your 2018 premiums. BWC will apply the dividend first to any balances that were outstanding, including the deferrals, before sending out any of the remainder to you. The dividend check was due to strong investment returns on employer premiums, declining number of claims each year, and just prudent fiscal management. Plus, we also credit you, the employer, because you've done a great job of improving your workplace safety and reducing claims. All of this comes into the impact of controlling costs. As I mentioned earlier, checks did go out in April. The checks are only good for 90 days, so if you have a, a dividend check and you have not cashed it, please do so. If you have any questions, just call your local office and ask for your employer service rep, or you can call me, you'll see my number at the end, and we'll look through it and try and figure out what's going on. But as I said, they sh you should have received it by now, and you should be cashing it as soon as possible. We're gonna talk next about the notices of estimated annual premiums. And this is a letter we send out every year. Uh, do you wanna fast forward it one? Thank you. Each policy year, BWC sends you an estimated annual premium letter out prior to the start of your new year. The estimated annual premium is usually goes out the first week of May, so you should have gotten it by now. In the estimated annual premium, letter, we based your premium based on 2019 payroll, but we did something different this year. When we took your 2019 payroll, we reduced it by 20% due to COVID-19. If for any reason this is too low or too high of an estimated amount of payroll, it's very important you contact the local office and talk to your employer service rep so that we can see if we can change that you want to change it early so that you're not paying in the back end at the end when you true up. So it's better that we fix it early, get you caught up, and um, so you're not paying a huge end on the back end. 
Your first premium payment is due in June 22nd. Your estimated annual premium letter does look very similar to this letter. Um, it comes from our administrator. It gives you your estimated annual premium for 2020, your premium installment schedule, as well as your BWC certificate. The letter also reminds you to true up at the end of this policy year for this current policy year of 2019. The estimated annual premium letter is, is there to help you budget in the future. So you do want to look at it. You want to look at the installment schedule and the amounts and make sure they're correct. If you can also check out your policy information as far as your premium and installments if you have an online account with us by going to your My Policy page and looking up your installment schedule, et cetera. The next piece we're gonna talk about is payroll reporting. And this is a little bit of requirements have changed due to the coronavirus that we actually uh, came up with a manual classification that might help you if you're teleworking. And that's what we're gonna talk about next. So in response to the COVID-19 pandemic, we did implement some changes in the payroll reporting process requirements to help ease the economic impact of this pandemic and the state of emergency for the business community. The employers with operational staff who are doing teleworking can now report under a class code of 8871, which is a clerical teleworker or telecommuter during the declared state of emergency. So that time that we were off due to a uh, state declared emergency, you could use this manual classification. The employer would need to ask for it from BWC to have it added to your payroll. To do that, you are going to have to contact us at rtcclass at ohiobwc.com or call our 800 line, 1-800-644-6292 and asked to have this manual classification added. Now, who, how does this work? This is a teleworker position. Let's say I'm a seamstress, which I'm not by the way, but let's say I am, and you send me home to do sales because I can no longer do my seamstress job. Then you would ask for this teleworker classification. But the moment that I go back to doing my job, for example, you send me home, instead of sending me home to do sales, you send me home to do my regular job as a seamstress, I take my sewing machine, my material, et cetera, then you would report under the normal manual classification. So if they're doing their normal job, whether it's half a day, a half a week, or a full week, you do need to report under their normal manual classification. If not, you can report under 8871. We are also introducing a new class code for public employers, 9444, and that's for employees that are in the public sector for clerical teleworkers to report to. That went to the board, it should be approved this month so that public employees, again, can use it during the state of emergency. Again, once the employer ceases operating under the state of emergency, you go back to your regular manual classifications. So other than that, you can report under the teleworker manual classifications and you do, again, have to report to BWC to request those be added to your policy. So I had a couple of questions asked of me. The next two slides are kind of questions that were asked to me in the past. And the first one was, are we required to report the wages when someone uses the emergency sick leave or extended family medical leave under the um, Family First Corona Response Act? Employers do not have to report these wages. During this period, then when the employees are using either the emergency sick leave or the family medical under the family first coronavirus, you don't have to report those. 
That's one thing you don't have to do. The next slide was another question I got quite frequently. And it was, what if I send an employee home and they're not doing any work, they're just idle, they're just at home, but I'm paying them. Is it required to report those wages? And the answer to that is no. You are not required to report the wages of someone that's at home not working just because you pay them because they're not doing a job function right now. So you do not have to report those. And again, you don't have to report the extended family medical leave under the first report coronavirus response act. Either one of those you do not have to report. The other question I got was what if they do part time? Can you go back just one? What if they do part time? You know, they work half a week and then the other half a week they don't. Um, if they work in their job function, you have to report those wages. So I just want to make that clear. If they're doing their job function, you do have to report those wages. All right, we can move on. <laughs> so payroll reporting um, is kind of important. One thing I didn't mention in the previous slide, you do want to keep track of the employee leave that they go on if they're not reporting, if they're sitting at home. Because if you're audited, you want to be able to explain why you didn't pay that. So that's kind of important. So if they're on sick leave or family medical leave and they're out, you just want to track that time just in case you're ever audited and asked that question. When it comes to the payroll reporting requirements, when COVID-19 ha happened, us, like everybody else, had a lot of things happening at once. We had to do several things, both on the claim side of the house and the employer side of the house. So what we've come up with is a COVID-19 fact sheet. And this fact sheet is on our main website. When you enter in on the employer page and scroll down, you'll see a link right there. And that fact sheet is updated with the most recent information. So for example, when we added the teleworker manual classifications and how you had to report, that was added on the fact sheet as well as when, how we were handling COVID-19 claims, uh, things like what, how, if they couldn't, get a, couldn't see a physician for their updated physicals or to see if they're able to come back to work, we had to explain how we were handling those too. So there's a lot of information on that fact sheet and we do update it. So if there's any changes, and again, we've had several changes over the past two months, that fact sheet is updated. So you wanna make sure that you look at it. I would say you should go out to the web at least once a week and see if BWC has updated anything so that you are aware of the information. Um, the hyperlink is shown on here that you can go directly to that. And it is a very helpful piece of information. And anytime we update or change anything, we will put it out on the website. And lastly is we're gonna talk about my contact information. As I mentioned early, earlier, Troy has retired. He had 30 years with BWC. I've got about 26. I'm not planning on going anywhere anytime soon. But I am here to help your, you as employers out there. I'm more than willing. I am out of the can office, but I have been in your area before, and I'm looking forward to when we get cut loose, being able to come to your area again and meet with you personally. But in the meantime, if you have any questions, please feel free to give me a call, send me an email. I'm here to help you and I'm more than willing to answer any questions that you might have. And I guess with that, we'll turn it over to questions. Well, thank you, Lori. We're taking a look at the uh, question and answer in the chat panel right now. No questions uh, at this moment, but again, like Lori said, uh, you can get in touch with her. Uh, if you have uh, more questions on this. Also, we'll share this uh, webinar on our YouTube page too. So if you know somebody who maybe needed to take part in this uh, with your company or, or somebody else uh, that you know, then, then you can share that along with them as well. But Lori, it's an uh, it's ever-changing series of things right now. And we certainly appreciate you getting us up to speed on the latest on that. And I'll keep you updated. As things change, I will send it out to the chambers. That's one of the, the job functions I do, is to try and keep chambers and employers involved in what's going on with BWC. So I'm happy to send that information to you as it changes. 
All right. Well, not seeing any questions. Do want to remind uh, those of you who are uh, in the webinar right now, we'll have our annual fresh brewed business or a monthly fresh brewed business, I should say. That's coming up on June 2nd at 8 in the morning. It'll be a webinar style format here on Zoom. But we're talking about the continued reopening of businesses in the area, what that's going to continue to look like, what businesses can expect out of customers, what customers should expect out of businesses. Uh, and, and we'll be looking at that from several different points of view. So really looking forward to that. You can go to the Chamber website right now uh, and register for that. So once again, Lori, appreciate you joining us. And sure. we'll see you next time here Thank with the you. Chamber. Thank you very much.